All right, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. My last video, I was, showed you some uh, Pakistani uh, small pipes or parlor pipes that I was going to set up for you and everything like that. The chanter on these things is basically untunable. I have tried everything, and the goofiest thing out of all things is this Pakistani chanter is the stock bore that's called the stock right there for those of you who don't know is undersized so when you put the chanter in it barely fits and you have to you hear that that scratchy sound that is the chanter scra read scraping on the board. So all you'll get is a squawk out of your chanter. That's one thing. So I've tried raising the chanter read as far as it can without falling out. And I can't get the chanter to pitch low enough. I pushed the chanter reed as far in as I could to try to get it to pitch high enough to balance out with the drones. It will not. And here's the funky thing. I have, hmm, let's see, all of my other Pakistani chanters will interchange tops without any modification or anything like that. So, I mean, uh, I'll show you this right here. That chanter top, look beautiful wood, by the way. But different chanter. The chanter that this top goes to is on a different chanter. So there's that. Here's one of my lower pitch chanters. Well, I turned it a little underside trying to get it to fit. But even with this one smaller, no way. So what I'm going to have to do is find a wood turner around here in Salt Lake or somebody with a lathe to hone this out so that it'll match the diameter of any of my other pipes or my other practice chanters. Yeah, I haven't got a clue where I put this ch practice chanter. So that's one thing that you'll get to have to get figure out. I spent two hours trying to get the cane reeds to work and <laughs> no go. There's too much back pressure in the drones for the reeds to stay open. They're the drone bores are really tiny. And when I first went to, to strike up the drones or blow through before I mounted the drones, uh, one of the bores was plugged with sawdust. So I had to get my handy dandy hanger and scrape all the sawdust out. I had to do that on the top bore of this, the base drone, and the middle bore of the tanner drone. So that's something to look for if you decide to get these. The other thing is the bore for the blow stock is not restrictive at all. Free blowing. This valve, because the stock is so narrow, what it does, because of the way the valve works, the air doesn't go straight down into the bore. It blows out sideways, right against a little tiny stock hole. So you're basically turning red in the face just to get any air throw, through. Now on eBay, they have a different type of uh, blowpipe valve than this one that looks like a little nipple and the, this is turned down and the nipple actually blows out of the way much more efficient so 
you might want to look for something like that because this is hugely restrictive and I I used to play a pretty stout reed and I always like to play my bag tight and huh, this is a lot of work so anyway the cane reeds they're cute but they don't work yeah that's not a minus though because we got some uh, synthetic reeds from uh, bagpipes galore and I put those in but the goofy thing is they sent me three tenor reeds with one well both the other tenor reeds are set up with tenor blades this is a tenor reed set up with a bass blade so I had to tune the bass like this which is not the way that it's supposed to be. They're not great Highland pipes, so you can't expect them to tune like the great Highland pipes, you know, at the hemp at the, all the way at the top and two fingers down below. It won't do that. Even if they if the the reeds are short or sorted out. So before I can fit a chanter that's actually going to work on this set of pipes. I'm going to need to get take this to get it honed out by somebody because I don't have any power tools. I'm in Salt Lake and all my stuff is in storage. Not a problem, but anyway, if you want to hear what the drones sound like, Now you have to remember these are small pipes, so they take a lot more gentle, a lot, a lot more gentle, gentler, proper English. I don't know. Anyway, they take a lot more care in your blowing because they will not blow even if you're if you're aggressive with them, like I've said about Highland pipes. Um, they're not blown in yet. They're not fully tuned, so I still got to work on this tenor reed a little bit to get it to tune right. Uh, I'll figure out what to do. I might try a tenor blade on this bass drone because they're it'll pitch higher and maybe it'll get the tuning to sound a little bit more stable. And I don't know. Tell me what you think. They aren't garbage. They just need more work than a set of pipes that comes ready to set play. Yeah, it'll probably cost me twelve to twenty bucks to get this turned out. There's not a whole lot of space to turn that out, but somebody with some calipers can can do it around here around Salt Lake. And that would be awesome. So anyway, that's how far I've gotten with these. A couple of tips on the bagpipes galore drone reeds. If you're messing around with them and you have to change a a blade. Now see these have rubber o-rings on them and that's the way they're supposed to be done I know I have a, another uh, <laughs> video with hemp and that's a fix up fix it so because I didn't have the money to to do that but I've got these specifically for this video and because I want to play these pipes so when you put these drone blades on you hold it down from this end this is the important end and you slip the o-rings on this way and then you have little notches in there I don't know if you can see them too close 
where it'll tune at. Now that blade looks really open, and it is, but it it plays just fine. <laughs> Now you can hear it double toning, that means it's a little bit too open because it's a bass read on a Tanner drone body. So I'm going to try this, switching that out. I might post another video, but I can't really do anything with this set of pipes until I get some small stuff fixed. Well, the thing is, with a set of Pakistani parlor pipes, you have to expect that they are not playable out of the box. I think they sound pretty cool. They, I think these drones sound like they pitch right around A. I don't have a tuner, so... But they sound kind of that uh, sonorous tone, which would be really cool. And I've got a couple chanters that that I might be able to get tuned down. I got... I don't know if I want to mess with this one, but... Let's see... Uh, one blackwood one and good old she sham one but I am not going to turn down the these just to fit this set of pipes because these are more value to me say like the top for this doesn't match. All of my chanters, the tops will interchange between all of them, except for this buggy set of uh, small pipes. Really, really strange, but that's what you get when you buy something you don't know exactly what the standards are going to be. Uh, what? This one will pit pitch. Uh, I think the voice matches the the drones. What I mean by voice is the tone and the character and the roundness. These drones are pretty round. They aren't real crispy. And I really, really want to get that blowpipe fixed because I can't blow tone when I'm working my brains out trying just to keep air in it. Now, just to show, if you want to get started setting up a set of small pipes like this, let me adjust this camera. You're going to need to get yourself equipped. You're going to need... <laughs> some stuff. Yeah, that's a blue snowball speaker. I bought that because I thought it was going to sound really cool, but you have to talk right directly into it. And when you're playing bagpipes, you're not talking directly into it. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. I'm a little shy on that. What you're going to need, just for the start, is some d drone stoppers. I got four of them, but one of them's out and about here. Oh, here it is. So you're going to need four stoppers, rubber stoppers for small pipes. So you're going to need that. You're going to need some wax tamp. I prefer wax tamp. Some people like dry hemp. I call it dry. I'm not sure what everybody else calls it. But it's wax hemp. Some wax. Now I made my own wax and maybe I'll post a video on how to, on my kind of formula for my own wax. Instead of using your teeth, there's my kit knife. I've never used this knife on anything else. 
And then I've had I've had several sets of Pakistani pipes. You know, when they go bad, they're usually not worth it to rebag the pipes because they're so cheap. But the bags are good for leather strips if you need to tie in a new stock or anything like that. These help it seal, especially with the chanter stock because you move that around the most. And then. I don't know, it was kind of a trip. I found these beads every, some, out somewhere when I was piping, and I don't know where they're from. They look like they're from India, but the wood's interesting. Anyway, and if you plan to go busking, keep your lucky dollar. That's the first dollar I ever earned busking, so that's my lucky dollar. My daughter keeps trying to steal it, but she knows by now that that's my lucky dollar. Now with Kane Reeds, Here's a dirty trick. Somebody's probably going to get mad at me. If you have a cane reed, it won't work on these little dinky things because they're they're just for pictures, I guess. I'm sure there's somebody out there that can make them work, but not me. So anyway, if you have a drone reed, I'm going to put this back up here. If you have a, dro a cane drone reed that is giving you trouble, there we go, and you not, cannot get it to work, <laughs> well, that one works, darn it. Probably overwhelmed this speaker, but what you can do is you take a paper clip. You can see that there. Get some light. Take a paper clip. Bend this in. So it doesn't snag on the cane. And push that up. This reed's broken. You push that in there. And that will give you a temporary fix. Now your reed might sound a little buzzy, but you won't have wasted a set of re cane reeds. I wouldn't do that on expensive reeds like husk reeds or uh, McCallum or any of the other cane reeds because those are more expensive. They're not expensive expensive, but still. So anyway, paperclip trick. I won't charge you for that. So, I'm not failed, I just don't have time to go out and get all the stuff done right yet. So I'll be posting another vi video, Yeah, I think I'm going to use this chanter, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me know what you think of the voice of this chanter, I don't know how well it comes out. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I think this, I think this channel will work as long as the pitch is right. Because channers pitch different when you blow mouth blow them, especially practice channers. They pitch different when then when you mount them on the bagpipes. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, <laughs> comment and let me know what you think of Pakistani parlor pipes. They're a lot of work. But once you get them running and everything like that, they're actually fairly stable. And they'll teach you how to play your pipes, your Great Highland pipes, more smoothly. And you'll blow better tone. And I'm not a world famous bagpiper. I'm not even out of grade four. I've only won one gold medal. But I know how to set up my pipes because when I started piping, I was self-taught. And the first thing I did was teach myself how to set up my own pipes and it was a lot of work and I did a lot of learning but it always befuddles me when you see somebody who's a, a grade 3 or grade 2 piper who can't adjust their own pipes and it, 
I think it's part of the tradition to have your pipe major or your instructor part of that tuning and everything like that. But anyway, I'm planning on doing some videos to show some people, show anybody who wants to learn how to play the bagpipes. Because whenever I go out and practice, the first thing I get asked is, I, or told is, I've always wanted to learn how to play the pipes. And I tell them what it takes, and I tell them what I had to do to get started. That's for another video. But anyway, uh, any questions or anything like that, leave comments, like, dislike. Uh, well, no foul language, but anyway, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Bye.